Okay, now after that, we are going to get ready to go into our next game. But before that, we are going to go to a quick commercial break, and we shall see you on the other side. It's Oh, we you went over by about a hundred bucks. Uh, CGN, before you start, what's your runner's choice? Like, if you have any donations that come in, what do you want to go towards? You hear that? And we are back. So I am going to go ahead and just update you on a few of the bids we've got coming up. So we finished the Deathborn and the very hard mode for GX. Um, we have. The Glover hand cam coming up. We have Pac-Man 2 boat donations coming up. There's a lot of stuff coming up. But if you look even further in the future, there are names for, uh, for Chrono Trigger. And I think the one that is always really, uh, well, I don't want to say hotly contested, but it's always one that brings in a lot of interest is... Uh, a certain should we kill the animals or should we save the animals now we have a grand total at the moment of seven thousand five hundred and fifty five dollars for kill the animals and five thousand and four hundred and two dollars for save the animals so if you have an, uh, an opinion there please go ahead and donate towards that And also, please note that any votes towards Taunt will contribute towards Kill. So, please understand that. So we're going into F Zero GX here, which has a, a prize that is dedicated to F Zero GX. Other than the the normal prize that you heard us talking about in the previous game, which stretches across both, <coughs> F Zero GX has from Haporge. Uh, it's a ten dollar buy-in, and it's an HD PVR two gaming edition plus which uh, is an amazing prize for $10. So go ahead and get your donations in on that, or either to the other two prizes before the end of this game in order to get drawn for those. And coming up after this race, we're going to 
I don't want to say it's one of our, uh, our favorite blocks of AGDQ, because favorite might be an overstatement or an understatement of awful games done quick. Um, so look forward to that. I think we're ready. Another mic, isn't there? <laughs> All right, so I will now hand this over to the guys down on the floor. This is F0GX with CGN. Before you guys get underway, can we get a roll call from the couch? Sure. Please. Yeah. Roll call. Roll call. Uh, I'm CDL. I'm Nagleria. I'm Yoshi Fan. I'm Indexic. I'm Dark Eye. Thank you very much. Oh, CGN, it's yours to take away, I think. What? It's yours to go when you're ready, I think. Ready on the timer? Should I count to three or? Just count count down three, two, one, go. All right. Three, two, one, go. So to start off, as the person who ran this game this year, I want to say, if you thought my run was impressive, <laughs> you better stay tuned because this guy's going to blow your mind. <laughs> so you heard it from me. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> that confidence. So we start off with uh, chapter one, where um, they place a bunch of capsules on the track and you have to finish in three laps while getting all the capsules. And um, the capsules are placed so that it's quite difficult to get them in three laps, especially that end part, where it's, it's just a mess of capsules unless you really know what you're doing. You can turn really fast. Uh, take up the capsules using a technique called quick turning. Uh, it's just a bunch of shoulder button presses. You press L and R in a control stick direction, and then you release R if you're turning left and L if you're turning right, and that allows you to turn really quickly without losing a lot of speed or skidding. Uh, the second best time in, uh, by like the silver medal holder for this like, next level is 36 seconds. Twenty dollars if you beat that. <laughs> so it's it, <laughs> it's got something called shift boosting, which is like the absolute hardest trick in the game for like humans to do. Uh, basically, if you leave the track and come back on like one or two frames later, you get a boost. I don't understand why. Does anyone have a clue? <laughs> it's just you get a boost and you can just. Keep doing them back and forth to stack them and get lots of boosts and go really, really fast. And this is really, really hard. Yeah, if you fail, you pretty much are instantly dead. So it's very risky. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I can still save time as long as I don't die two or three times. Yeah, this saves over 30 seconds to do. It saves quite a bit of time, so it's worth it to go for it. <laughs> oh, so, uh, if he gets like a 36 second time, he'll be at about what Yoshi fan would be from not doing shift boost last year, time wise. <laughs> You notice that after he does a shift boost, he turns his engine off. That's um, a technique called momentum throttle. Basically, uh, when you're above like roughly 1,200 to 1,300 kilometers an hour, um, 
having the engine on makes your speed go down faster than having the engine off. Yeah, the reason being, like, when your engine's off, you'll lose speed at a very low linear rate. And when you turn the engine on, it'll crank down to the top speed really fast. Uh, it's, just a, <laughs> it's just a quirk with the physics. There's a lot of quirky physics in this game, as you might be able to tell. Uh, that was a really bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> His really bad time still beat my personal best on that level, <laughs> and I've been grinding it so much. <laughs> oh well. All right. So in chapter three, you're going to see a few more uh, techniques. So there's a bunch of jump plates in this stage. And um, so what CGN is going to do to get the most speed out of this is after hitting the jump plate, he's going to dive down and do some side attacks. Those actually, uh, those side attacks actually speed you up in the air. <laughs> he does an MTS off of it, so he hits the jump plate with more speed. Uh, it it's also means you have to do uh, air strafing rather well. <laughs> it's also really risky. <laughs> There's also a shortcut that he can attempt on the boost laps that's really risky and instantly blows him up if he doesn't do it right, so yeah, we'll see what there's happens. Yeah, there's like invisible checkpoints around the level that you need to hit, just like an F-Zero on the SNES, and if he does a, a very particular jump coming up improperly, he'll just explode and die and have to reset. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. Now, any sane person would not do that on the third lap. However... <laughs> and uh, at the end, he's doing a rail slide where uh, it, like the, the, it was something you could do in F-Zero X, and uh, they tried to make sure you couldn't do it in the GX engine, but after momentum throttling was discovered, they'd, uh, they found that if you do a rail slide while momentum throttling, you can... Uh, go really, really fast. It's probably explain what an MTS is. I don't think that was explained. Uh, oh, an MTS is a momentum turbo slide. Uh, basically, it's like in GX where uh, you can just slide around and go really fast, except uh, you have to like uh, let go of the A button in order to do it. Because uh, if you hold the A button, you're basically your machine will want to go to the top speed, which uh, is a lot lower than what you would be traveling. Uh, basically, you just turn 90 degrees and then straight forward really fast. That's the best way to explain it. All right, so here we have chapter four, which is basically the death race of this, um, of this game. And so the objective technically is to just uh, defeat Michael Chain, who is number one in the, um, in the ranking in this race. But uh, it turns out that the strategy is basically to defeat everyone else. And the reason is um, Michael Chain slows down at the end under two conditions, one of two conditions, uh, either defeating everyone else or when there are uh, 500 meters, 5,000 meters remaining in the course. And um, also if you don't defeat everyone else, they kind of like meet shield around Michael Chain making it very difficult to, to get in. And um, there are two different kinds of attacks you can use. And CGN favors side attacks because they take out the enemies much more quickly. But um, the other kind of attack is spin attacks, which you see uh, Michael Chain students doing. And uh, if you side attack into a guy who's doing a spin attack, then it hurts you, so you have to watch out for that. Yeah, and one thing is that all the AI in the game that attacks you will always use spin attacks, except for Deathborn in Chapter 8. He's the only one who will ever do side attacks. It's the only AI that will do it. Every time you retire a machine, it gives you a small burst of energy, which you can turn into more boosts. So it's really advantageous. Oh, wow. <laughs> That was a pretty
pretty optimal kill on Michael yeah. Chain. So like technically, like I, I think if you wanted like crazy tool assist and stuff, you could just try to only kill a few machines and like blast your way to the front. But it, it's I don't know, it, it's kind of dumb. It's not consistent. It's, yeah. uh, for chapter five, forty bucks if you skip a capsule. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do it, it's just 40 bucks. Uh, I'll consider it. <laughs> All right, this is chapter five. Uh, a lot of people think it's one of the hardest stages in the game. You have 40 seconds to escape this exploding tunnel, and if you don't, you die instantly. Uh, it looks pretty simple, like a straight line, but there are walls coming in from the sides and above that try and crush you and stop you from moving. Yeah. Additionally, you have a full energy meter when you start, but the only way to recover energy is getting capsules, which are really small and hard to hit. So uh, during this chapter, CGN uses a technique called momentum throttling boosting, where in between boosts he turns his engine off. Uh, this means he can travel really fast, way faster than you're supposed to, and optimize his time as much as possible. Hopefully. Oh wait, he doesn't have a boost at the end, so this is gonna be a little. Uh... Oh. 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 Yeah! I didn't actually think you'd do that. <laughs> But here's 40 bucks. Uh, who do I should I give this to? <laughs> to, quote, to quote someone from the chat, human task confirmed. <laughs> Tool assisted runs, there's a few of done of them with this game. Uh, they're all really crazy because there's just stuff that human hands physically just cannot perform, like 30 hertz mashing and weird random RNG stuff that's just no, no human will ever get close to tool assisted runs. <laughs> Alright, so for this chapter, um, you have to keep your speed above 800 kilometers an hour or you explode. There's a bomb strapped to the car. And uh, for the most part, it's not too tricky. You just have to watch out for the, uh, the cars driving on the sides of the road, and also dirt later on the level that will slow you down. You must boost through the dirt, or else you'll slow too, uh, slow down too much and die. Also, in most cases, um, if you accidentally hit a wall, if it's not like the lightest of wall taps, then you will probably go under 800. Yeah, like if, if you get hit on the side, you might be okay. If you get hit on the front, you're done. You're reset. Second. Yeah, sure. I have a $500 donation. Ooh. Yeah. From Tommy Rafane, who says, I missed the Super Meat Boys race, which bums me out, but I'm having to await him for F Zero GX. Keep up the great money work. Money goes to runner's choice. PS, I will donate an additional $100 if the announcer pronounced my last name correctly. Well, good luck <laughs> on that one. Oh yeah, when there's one quirk with the, the boost plates or the dash plates, if you hit them on the very, very side, you'll get like 1.1 times the boost. So you get like an extra 10%. But it's like half the time when you try to do that, you'll just miss the plate entirely. So it's, it's another very mean thing about this game. <laughs> oh, <I think. laughs> it was a bit more scary than it needed to be. <laughs> And one mean thing about this level's design is that at the very end, there's this blind right turn that pretty much everyone on their first time is just going to crash into the wall right here. <laughs> so after two and a half minutes of frustrating nail biting, they, uh...
Here's another forty dollars for chapter seven, first try. Because <laughs> a lot of people might say chapter five is the hardest, but me and I'm pretty sure everyone on the couch will say chapter seven is by far the hardest. Seven is pretty difficult. This is probably where if you bought the game as a kid, this is where you'd get stuck on normal. Uh, <laughs> Black Bull and Blood Hawk on this stage kind of cheat. They have more energy than they're supposed to have. Uh, so a lot of people, uh, they try to kill Black Bull right at the start of the race because he's directly behind you. Si Jin uh, is a little more risky than that. He just simply doesn't care. He lets Black Bull run away. He actually gets a, a back boost off of him. Uh, goes for the mind boost even though it's, oh, that's a very risky strat. Yeah, this stage is just grueling. You got lava, you got mines, you have uh, coming up a, a part of the track with no railing. It's very, very slim, but it's possible to do shift boost, but it's really hard. Like oh! that. Oh my God. And uh, Bloodhawk is very, very aggressive. Yeah, several of the AI racers here are quite aggressive, and uh, Black Bull and Bloodhawk are particularly fast. Um, if you don't use shift boost, and you're not as good as CGN, then you're probably never going to outrun Black Bull like, for the entire race. Like, for most human beings, it's probably straight up impossible to just outrace these guys. <laughs> but, but CGN does stuff like that, so it gives them a bit of an edge. And, like, with the story mode programming, like, uh, all the vehicles will have like better acceleration and better top speed, except for you, of course. And uh, it makes it really, really hard to do this chapter. One thing to note is because we're on very hard, it's five laps instead of three. So not only do you have to deal with all this stuff, you have to deal with it for way longer than normal, so. Yeah, like chapter five requires really hardcore execution for 40 seconds. This chapter requires hardcore execution for about two minutes, which is why I would say it's, it's harder. They also has really insane rubber banding, so if you go really fast, they'll still be right on top of you. And in fact, if you stay ahead the whole time, they'll get about a 235, which is better than most human players can get on this stage. I think that's my personal best time, yeah. actually. <laughs> And also because Black Bull and Bloodhawk have way more health than they're supposed to, that also means they have more boost power, because your health and your boost power are shared, and they straight up cheat. They will catch up, even though they are like absolutely no reason for them to. He's done really, really solid MTSing on the uh, Ice Patch turn, which is really hard to do. And right there, another MTS. MTSing at low speeds is actually kind of finicky. Oh, he went for the mic. <laughs> uh, so that was indeed first try. <laughs> and just before we start the next ra uh, la uh, la uh, race, I would like to announce we just hit $350,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Over, I'm gonna hand off to the next person. So with this level, uh, you gotta fight Deathborn, uh, race Deathborn in what I think, according to the story, is actually hell. And CGN, he doesn't uh, think Deathborn's that good, so he's gonna give him a bit of a head start here, as you uh, guys donated. Uh, Twenty-five whole seconds. <laughs> Twenty-five. Uh, I, actually, I think uh, it was uh, over a hundred dollars, like overshot. So if you're feeling uh, a little uh, ballsy, you could do 26. <laughs> 26 whole seconds. All right, challenge accepted. possible now. <laughs> so, Deathborn's about to finish his first lap. <laughs> yeah, so um, the strategy with the mines here is to hit a bunch of them on the first lap, and there are two reasons. On the boost, first of all, on the boost laps you have boost power, so you don't need the mine boost. And second of all, um, when you're boosting, 
hitting mines is really dangerous and will often throw you off the track. So he's gotten a lot of them out of the way on the lap one. There's a few particular mines that can, like, that one there, if you hit that, it's pretty much guaranteed death when you're boosting by. So he has to be very careful. Also, the lava pits do a lot of damage, so he needs to be careful not to uh, sit on those for too long. They are molten lava. And doing an MTS there is optimal, but I I, I, don't, I wouldn't do it. It's a little... <laughs> well, that's why you're not running. Yeah, precise. <laughs> what he actually does there is an MTS into a quick turn, which is... An yeah. interesting like culmination of two techniques. So you need to like lose traction and lose grip altogether in order to initiate an MTS. There's a few ways to like initiate the MTS and there's also several ways to exit it. Uh, it depending on the turn, there's multiple different ways. Like you'll be seeing quite a few different ways to exit MTS this year. Although to really like try to figure that out. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's actually quite uh, tricky to follow because he's going roughly the speed of sound. So when he does catch up to death porn, he has to be pretty careful because um, depending on the part of the track it is, it can be very, very dangerous to pass death porn. Yeah, like he could very easily just boost and like give you a perfect side attack to kill you. He's catching up, which... <laughs> no, One thing to note is Deathborn is basically invulnerable, so you can't kill him. And if you do manage to kill him, he'll just respawn in five seconds anyways. Yeah. So you just gotta outrace him. And I would say he got outraced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, this is the final chapter. Uh, if the last chapter was racing the devil in hell, this is racing God himself in some crazy <laughs> techno dimension. A rainbow and, uh, Yeah. This level doesn't have railings anywhere, so you can strafe off the edge if you want, which, if you're paying attention to chapter two, means we're gonna see some shift boosts. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. If, that's if he's uh, going, uh, going hard at it, and going ham or whatever uh, kids say these days. It's worth noting that uh, shift boosts are much harder in this stage because for a lot of it, they're going uphill, which means you have much tighter oh. timing. Yeah. To get back on the track. Like the steeper it is uphill, the like the harder it's going to be. It's actually like frame perfect at a certain angle. So every time he does it, it's like. Yeah. Also, the slower you're going, the it, it, the harder it is. So at the very start here, it's actually really really hard to do a shift boost. This is the absolute hardest part of the track to do shift boost on, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this game's physics is weird. You can do a lot of crazy stuff. Human beings, when they're playing this, they'll uh, save boost for this section so they have enough speed to do like a dive. But CGN just does like a wonky MTS and then a uh, side attack <laughs> dive. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> so, that, I waste yeah. a lot of time. <laughs> Shift boosts are hard. Even uh, the best of us can uh, 
just mess them up. Because for all intents and purposes, I'd say this is frame perfect, each individual one. Well, this is a really easy chapter without shift twisting, but <laughs> I, I can't uh, resist going for them. <laughs> 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 You're over two, like almost two seconds ahead. Just take your lead. I want to go fast. <laughs> I love that corner cut. <laughs> so, uh, are we shift boosting on the final lap again? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> My blood pressure is already high enough. <laughs> With you. <laughs> Humans should not do this. Were <laughs> you sent from the future? <laughs> also, don't skip the last cutscene. You gotta see the credits. Oh, yeah. That's it's my a bit slow, but. Oh my god. I did. I wanted to like mention the TAS where the replay like failed just because the shift was. I did manage to pull off a lot of risk, so I hope it was entertaining. Also, I did die like three or four times. <laughs> oh. So, uh, yeah, if you want to uh, purchase this wonderful game, it's roughly $15, including shipping. <laughs> I just want to say something, like, really quick. Like, if you think the game can't get any faster, um, you should check out CGN's uh, tool assisted runs of this game. There's one, there's one on a track where he goes so fast using shift boosting that the game's replay mode desynced. <laughs> I'm not making it up. Speaking of following him, his, I'm being told his uh, follower count has just doubled. Oh yeah, I hope you, I hope you turned off the Twitch notifications to follow him. <laughs> So yeah, last year when uh, like CGN couldn't make it and Yoshi Fan was doing their run, CGN would average about seven viewers on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. So I, it's probably gonna, that average is probably gonna raise a little, I'm guessing. <laughs> also, the the credits music is like awesome. Do we have any space flying machines on the memory card? Yeah, I have space flying. We had time to show off some really hilarious glitch. Oh yeah. Oh babe. So on F oh yeah, uh, F Zero Central dot org. That's F Z E R O C E N T A I R C E N T R A L. Yeah, I was I was, I was uh, spelling it the Canadian way there. Uh, <laughs> 
But F0Central.org, which uh, servers might be down in a couple seconds, uh, there's three ladders. Uh, the max know, speed ladder, kidding. the snaking ladder, <laughs> and the open ladder, which play. has space flying, which uh, CGN can demonstrate here. So to do space flying, you need a really light machine. Unfortunately, I forgot to include some of my memory cards, so he's going to make one really quick. <laughs> oh yeah, good thing you didn't use my memory card for the, the emblems on the machines. <laughs> but... Uh, it, uh, there's actually two non-custom vehicles which can do it like okay, Super Piranha and Death Anchor. Uh, but they're, they're like you pretty much need a comp, uh, custom machines designed specifically for space flying in order to do it with any like uh, speed. Uh, it's really really weird. I don't know why it works, but uh, it's a thing. Pretty much this game has so many glitches that we've had to divide it into three entirely separate ladders because <laughs> yeah. there's space flying, which is, as you'll see in a moment, completely and utterly broken. The open ladder also has hyperspeed side attack yeah. you know, to reset this uh, side attack thing. There's, there's a lot of really crazy things you can do in this game. There's also snaking where you press L and left, R and right repeatedly to gain tons of speed. And the story mode run you saw was done on max speed, which sets the slider all the way to the right meaning that snaking and space flying are pretty much impossible unless you use the right vehicle. All so, right, space flying. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he's on lap two after eight seconds. <laughs> Last lap, all right. Last lap. And you can just... Is this Dark Eyes memory card? Yeah. Okay, his, his personal best time is going to get this <laughs> <laughs> it's actually yeah. really hard to lag the game, but he's loading virtually the whole level at once here, and it's it's actually one of the rare occurrences I've actually seen an F Zero game actually uh, drop in frame rate. And uh, this this uh, height gainer has a purpose. I'm gonna show it off in like 20 seconds. <laughs> Welcome to F Zero. <laughs> All right. Uh, you should look at his speedometer right now. He just cracked four uh, Mach four, Mach five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's our viewer count right now, just for uh... About 16K. Wow. Nice. nice. So, uh... Alright. That's F-Zero GX. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. Alright, if you're just joining us, this is Awesome Games Done Quick, brought to you by Speed Demos Archive raising money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. The mission of the Prevent Cancer Foundation is saving lives through cancer prevention and early detection. Our vision is to stop cancer before it starts. We have a $50 donation from Christopher Pease. He says, watching the F-Zero runs, I didn't realize they left the task bot back in the building for another run. It's amazing to see these games broken over the knee like this. Thank you, Christopher. We have another 50 from Brian Kelly, who says, thank you all for doing, uh, for doing this. So much fun and for such a great cause. And we have $100 from Doug Barnes, who says, wow, CGN is really talented. I've never seen F-Zero GX played like this before. Very, very impressed. Thanks for making such a